this. And we talked about a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. So it's an isosceles triangle because you've got two 45 degree angles. So if the angles have the same measure, the sides opposite from them will have the same measure. So that's why it's an isosceles triangle. And the hypotenuse is always whatever your leg is times the square root of the two. So we, we looked at a couple of scenarios there. If we know the square root or the, the hypotenuse is three square root of two, we know the legs are both three. If we know the legs are three square root of two of two, then the hypotenuse is going to be three because when you multiply it by the square root of two and simplify. There's another special right triangle uh, based on its angles, and that's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Now, 30, 60, 90 triangles have a little bit more to them because uh, they are not isosceles. Okay, you've got a 30 degree angle and a 60 degree angle, so those two legs definitely have different lengths. But uh, this is the way I always look at it, okay? Uh, 30 degrees is the smallest angle. So the side across from 30 degrees is your x. So your say it's 2, okay? Um, then your hypotenuse is 2 times that length. So if the side across from 30 is 2, the hypotenuse would be 4. And then the side across from 60 is kind of a weird one. Um, you add a square root of 3, or you don't add, you multiply by the square root of 3, so it would be 2 square roots of 3. So let's look at some examples here. This first one, number nine, has six square roots of three, and six square roots of three is opposite of our 60 degree uh, angle here. So that means that coefficient in front, the six, is going to be the leg across from 30. Well, they don't have the 30 degree angle labeled, but the leg across from 30 is the y, so in this case, y is equal to six. And then the side, the hypotenuse, is 2 times that amount. So it will be 12. Okay. Number 10 has the hypotenuse labeled with 8 square roots of 3 over 3. The hypotenuse is labeled with 8 square roots of 3 over 3. So in my mind, if I've got the hypotenuse, I think it's easiest to go ahead and find the side across from 30 degrees. All you have to do is divide it by 2. So n is going to be 4 square roots of 3 over 3. All I'm doing is dividing the 8 <coughs> by 2. Because I was given the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 2 times the x. So if I want the side across from 30, I'm going to divide by 2. Okay? And then once I have the side across from 30, I need to multiply it by the square root of 3 to get the side across from 60 or n here. So I'm going to take 4 square roots of 3 over 3, and I'm going to multiply it by the square root of 3. Remember what we said on Thursday. When we multiply the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, it leaves us with just 3. And then we can cancel those 3s. So m is equal to 4. Okay, and then let's look at 11. We're given the side across from 30 degrees. So this is, I think, the easiest scenario to build up. If we've got the side across from 30, the hypotenuse is 2 times that length. So x is going to be 8, and then the other leg is going to be 4 times the square root of 3. Now, um, if they were to test you this on the final exam, you do have your calculator. Um, so, worst case scenario, pick one of the answer choices put them in the triangle, and see if the Pythagorean theorem checks out. Now, let me show you something with parentheses here. You have to be careful um, if you're checking with that square root. So I'm going to check this one just to make sure that I've got it right. 4 squared plus, I have to put 4 square roots of 3 in parentheses. Okay, so closing the parentheses there closes the square root. Closing it again closes it around that term. 
Okay, if I don't get those parentheses right, and that gives me 64, which is 8 squared. If I didn't get those parentheses there, uh, let's say, let's just say I don't even put any parentheses. I just typed in what the calculator's got. Okay, it's going to tell me that it's 28. All it's doing is it is only squaring the square root of 3. Okay, it is not squaring 4 square root of 3, which is the entire length of that leg. It's only squaring the square root. Um, so, you've got to make sure you get parentheses around that entire term. Um, if it's a quotient, I mean, same thing like with number 10. If we wanted to check that, uh, 4 squared plus, you've got to make sure you get parentheses around this whole thing. Okay, close the parentheses there on the square root, and then close the parentheses around the whole term. And then we've got to see, is that equivalent to 8 square root to 3? Oops, over 3 squared. And it is. Okay. So, you can always check it using the Pythagorean theorem. You just have to be careful when square roots are involved that you put parentheses around everything. Okay? Alright, so... Uh, before we move on to the trig ratio stuff, I want to make sure I cover all the bases. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, I have a right triangle here with one angle measure, or labeled with theta. Okay, theta is just a Greek letter, it's a symbol, it's like an X. Okay, they just use it a lot for the variable with these trig ratios. Um, so, in this case, theta is the angle on the base of our triangle. This only applies for right triangles. Now we're going to start by labeling our sides uh, in relation to that angle. Now, the hypotenuse is always the same regardless of where theta is. The hypotenuse is always the side directly across this little right angle. To me, it kind of, it has a point and it points straight to the hypotenuse. Okay, the corner of your right angle points directly to the hypotenuse. It should not touch any other side in your triangle. It doesn't matter how your triangle is oriented. The right angle, that corner, is always going to point to the hypotenuse. So the other two sides are left to be labeled as either opposite or adjacent. Now to me, the adjacent is the easier one to identify. Um, if you draw like a curve through your angle, the, it's going to intersect the hypotenuse, and the other side that it intersects is the adjacent side. Adjacent means to be next to, to be touching. Okay, So adjacent is the side that is next to that angle, and then your opposite side is over here. Now, if theta had been the angle up at the top, our opposite and our adjacent would be reversed. Because then if theta were up here, it would be touching this side, and that would be the adjacent side, and the opposite side would be the horizontal uh, base side. Okay, so it matters where theta is. Now, <clears throat> what these trig ratios are telling us um, it's, it's a ratio, okay? If I ask you what's the sine of theta, you're going to take the opposite length and you're going to put it over the hypotenuse length, and it's going to give you a ratio. If I ask you for the cosine, you're going to take the adjacent length and you're going to put it over the hypotenuse. That gives you the ratio. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, some people learn to remember this uh, with Sokotoa. Okay, that's sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, I learned it, um, oh heck, another hour of algebra, sine, cosine, tangent, oh heck, another hour of algebra. That's how I learned it. And then some people learn it, um, some old horse caught another horse. taking oats away. There are tons of different ways to remember these. Um, those are just several different 
mnemonic devices to help you remember sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay? Whatever works for you, I don't care. If you want to come up with your own, go for it. Okay? Just keep it appropriate. Um, if it helps you learn it, good. Okay? So let's, let's use these. Okay? Let's use these. So let's look at example 21. Okay, the sine of z. Now I don't care which angle, or excuse me, I don't care which trig ratio they ask us for. Every single time I want you to label the sides at least with O, A, and H. Okay, so uh, automatically when I'm given a right triangle and I'm asked about trig, I'm going to label my hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to label the hypotenuse first. Then they ask me about angle Z. So I'm going to draw that line through angle Z. So the other side that it touches is the adjacent. And then the odd man out is the opposite. <laughs> so then all I have to remember is that sine is the opposite, in this case 14, over the hypotenuse 50. Now if you can reduce that ratio, you do want to reduce that ratio. And yes, you need to write it this way. You need to say the sine of z is equal to, uh, those are both divisible by 2, so 7 over 25. That is your answer right now. Okay, we're not solving anything. We're just setting up these ratios. Okay, so 22. Like I said, always start hypotenuse. Look at the angle. Angle C, so that means 32 is my adjacent, the odd man out is the opposite with 24. So the sine of C is equal to the opposite, 24. Thank you. You are in group 6. Okay, the opposite over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 40. Okay, we want to reduce that. Those are both divisible by 8. So 3 over 5 is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse in this right triangle. Okay, let's look at some cosines. Okay, label the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is the 17. Identify the angle, angle A, so that means 8 is the adjacent. 15 is the opposite. Cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 8 over 17, 8 and 17 do not share any common factors. So that's as simple as that one goes. Okay. 24. The hypotenuse is... 35, cosine of x, so 28 is our adjacent, 21 is our opposite. <coughs> cosine of x is equal to the adjacent, 28 over the hypotenuse, 35. Those are both divisible by 7. So 4 over 5 is the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse in this right triangle. Okay, tangents. Label the hypotenuse. Angle C, so 12 is the adjacent, 35 is the opposite. So the tangent of C is equal to the opposite, 35, over the adjacent, 12. I don't think that will reduce. Okay, one more. Tangent of x here is 39 is the hypotenuse. Angle is x, so 15 is the adjacent. 36 is the opposite. Tangent of x is equal to 36 over 15. Those are both divisible by 3. So 12 over 5. 